Dr. Andre as the only members of their immediate family remaining. People are dancing and partying in Brest City Park while Sasha plays his instrument. He spotted Anya, his longtime infatuation, passing by and flashing a smile at Sasha from that point forth. He abruptly stopped playing his instrument and quit the band in the middle of their performance. Sasha was stopped by his brother, Andre, who watched him leave. Andre threatened to notify the commander to punish him if he didn't return and continue playing. Sasha returned to the band since he had no other option. Sasha takes a 4x4 pickup to his house after this. Although Fortress is a small community, Sasha knows a lot of spots to hide in a stronghold. A commissar, Yefim Famine, learns that he and his family will be unable to go to Brest because of a shortage of railway tickets. A man called Nikolai was heading to the fortress when the commissar passed by the commissar Famine. Famine hopped into the back of the vehicle and made his way to the fortress. Since he is unable to bring his family along, he begins to write to his wife to let her know where he is. Despite warnings from his comrade, Lieutenant Weinstein of the NKVD Special Department, about an impending conflict with Germany, another officer, Gavrilov, is still concerned about the fort's defenses being ready in the event of an assault. Residents and soldiers were treated to an evening showing of a film later in the day inside the fortress, which was broadcast live. German commandos sabotage the fortress as the film is playing. The train driver conducts an inspection of the smoking section of the train at the railway station. He was approached by an officer disguised as a Red Army to light his cigar. The train driver is shocked to see German soldiers in Red Army uniforms with guns upon exiting the train. The comrade major stabbed him with a knife and died instantly. The Germans are now on their way to the Brest fortress, leaving the dead train driver. The people of Brest have no clue what is about to happen in the next several hours. While picking flowers for his girlfriend, Nikolai was approached by the comrade major, who inquired about his last name. Nikolai returned to his sweetheart as the comrade continued to stroll. In the early hours of the following day, German soldiers overrun the Soviet territory at precisely 3.58 am. There was a commotion at the Brest fortress as people were leaving. Sasha and Anya are fishing in the lake when a bomb goes off, sending Sasha plunging into the water. They were all awakened from their slumber in the fortress. The fortress is bombarded by German artillery and Stuka planes, killing numerous Soviet troops and civilians. Lieutenant Kijevatov, Anya's father, is forced to conceal his family and fight against the Germans since he has no option but to do so. However, Sasha was back at the fortress and observed the Germans brutally slaughtering the civilians around him. Nobody could have predicted the start of the conflict. In the event of a battle, Sasha intends to go to a designated meeting spot, which he watched being destroyed. He went to the music room to get his only weapon, but it was broken, too. German forces launch an assault on the fortress at exactly 6.30 am, seizing hospital workers and patients, many of whom they murder. The people attempted to flee, but it was too late when they were confronted by Germans at the gate, who killed anybody who stood in their way. Famine assumes leadership of the defenders stationed around the Colm Gate complex. Germans are on their way in their direction, and they are running out of rifle ammunition. A different approach is taken by Gavrilov, who organizes his forces around Eastern Fort. The German comrade major participates in the combat but is not recognized by the NKVD lieutenant who is in charge of the operation. The German comrade major had no idea who the Red Army was, but he was quickly identified as a German. He tried to flee, but the NKVD lieutenant shot him in the chest. Meanwhile, the Germans escorted the individuals from the hospital to a location where they were kept as hostages. Weinstein successfully repels a German raid into the fortress, while border guards under the direction of Lt. Kijevatov resist an effort by a German commando to weaken the defense of the barracks of the 132nd Independent NKVD Convoy Battalion, which is located in the fortress. The siege of the fort begins, and Sasha finds himself isolated in one of the barracks for the duration. Meanwhile, three tanks are on their way inside the fortress, which has just a few guns and weapons on hand. These soldiers are on what amounts to a death mission for the remainder of the Red Army. The Soviet soldiers charge the Germans with little more than their rifles and grenades in their hands. They set fire to and murdered any German who attempted to infiltrate their territory. A 45mm anti-tank cannon used by junior lieutenant Andrei Akimov, Sasha's older brother, is shot and dies while destroying two Panzer Ives with a 45mm anti-tank gun, assisting Gavrilov in repelling a German assault on the East Fort. With just 18 persons capable of carrying a firearm by the end of June 22nd and with no access to medication, water, or food, the situation is bleak and hopeless. Even though they are still waiting for assistance from the city, they have not yet heard from or gotten any help. 
The Soviet defenders are divided into three groups. One force under Fomin is defending the Kolm Gate, a second force under Gavrilov is supporting the Eastern Redoubt, and Kizhevatov is defending the 9th Frontier Outpost, which is also protected by a group of civilians, while Weinstein is defending the barracks of the 132nd NKVD Battalion. The next day, the battle for the fortress continues, and Sasha finally makes it to the Kolm Gate, where he may escape. On the other hand, Sasha did not continue to submit and took refuge in one of the barracks. Sasha inquired about Anya's location in his report and was sent to Lt. Kizhevatov. He was, however, sent to the basement instead. Meanwhile, Nikolai, who had fallen out after falling from the balcony, awakens to see his sweetheart being hauled away and used by the Germans. He is furious and makes his way out of the chamber after escaping from it. Nikolai is forced to rescue his beloved since he has no other option left to him. For this part, Fomin's soldiers shoot down an I-16 Soviet fighter plane belonging to the 123rd Fighter Aviation Regiment above the fortress, and the pilot is rescued by Fomin's men. His revelation that the Red Army is withdrawing into Minsk causes Fomin to understand that the troops must either flee or perish in the barricades. They are heartbroken after learning from the pilot that there will be no more rescue missions on the fortress in the near future. On June 24, civilians were dying of famine and hunger as a result of a shortage of water and food supplies. In order to get some water, the Red Armies are excavating deep inside their barracks. On the other hand, the water is not potable since it contains gasoline. In accordance with an order from Commanding Leadership Commissar Fomin, Captain Zubarev and Lieutenant Vinogradov decide to make an immediate exit from the fortress in order to reconnect with their regular units of the Red Army and continue fighting against Nazi soldiers. One of the soldiers writes it down. Sasha had overheard the order, but he was not permitted to accompany the other soldiers. Instead, he was tasked with transporting water to the basement, where physicians were treating the injured troops and soldiers. Having located the soldier who holds the message but is unable to deliver it, Sasha departs the Kolm Gate to inform the other pockets about Fomin's intention to stage a breakout from the fortress. From there, he was able to track down Anya, who was hiding from the Germans. Sasha cannot take the chance of Anya going out and running toward the fortress, but he is pledged to return to Anya's location. Sasha is struggling to get the idea through to the other Red Army members. On his journey, he comes across a large number of dead corpses. Sasha discovers that the 132nd has been overwhelmed and that Weinstein has been killed, but he is able to convey the news to Kizhevatov and Gavrilov before they are captured. The next night, the three surviving units try and escape but are forced back by the Germans, who suffer significant casualties in the process. A large number of troops fled the scene of the attempted escape. On the following day, realizing that Lt. Kizhevatov is unable to adequately protect the Red Army, he discovers a large number of dead people from the barracks. Many of them are children who are dying of starvation. Meanwhile, Sasha has returned to Anya and is attempting to locate her. Anya was unconscious when he arrived. He instructs Anya to go out and return to his father's house. Sasha also provides her with some water to help her recover. During a ceasefire, Lt. Kizhevatov orders the remaining people, including his own wife and daughter Anya and Sasha, to leave the castle, which they do unwillingly. It is exactly 3.58 pm on June 26. The Red Army is still waiting for assistance from the city and is calling them by telephone to request assistance. The Germans attack the fortress with a two-ton bomb, inflicting widespread devastation. The Germans move fast to eliminate any remaining pockets of resistance by using a combat tank. They even set fire to the surviving people's bodies. The Germans took a photograph of Nikolai with them for publishing and record, and he was able to live as well. Nikolai was given the task of collecting the remaining army pins. While he was doing this, he discovered the body of his girlfriend. Nikolai was distraught at his lover's condition when he found a grenade and seized the pin, causing a German to die instantaneously beside Nikolai. He was lying next to his sweetheart. Eventually, the defenders at Kolm Gate are forced to surrender, and Commissar Fomin is instantly murdered by a German firing squad for his crimes against Jews, communists, and the government of the Soviet Union. Meanwhile, Gavrilov orders his surviving soldiers to make an individual break for freedom. He expressed his gratitude to each comrade for their outstanding service and devotion to the fortress. Lt. Kizhevatov and his surviving troops are able to regroup in the barracks, and Sasha comes to meet them there after the battle. After commanding Sasha to seize the regimental colors and remember the truth about the defenders, Kizhevatov deploys a machine gun to protect his soldiers as they try and escape from the barricades. The breakout is unsuccessful, and the surviving defenders, including Kizhevatov, are slain. However, 
Sasha manages to run with the secret message from Lieutenant Kijevatov, which she delivers to the others. The stronghold has been demolished from a pleasant and